Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> We've got some festive eating going on here this morning. Uh, I don't know if y'all been listening to that music that was just playing now, but I was trying to think in my head, what does it sound like? And to me, it sounded like we were in the midst of a video montage, uh, like a Christmas e showing scenes. And so that's, in my head, that's what I was thinking. Um, let's stand together as we begin worship this morning. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. of peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, risen with healing in His wings. Mild He lays His glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Let your glory ring, shining like the day. King of stand against us. You are strong to save in your mighty name, King of heaven come. Christ by highest heaven adore. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Let your glory reign, shining like the day. King of heaven, come. stand against us. You are strong to save in your mighty name. King of heaven, come. Sing, King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come.
glory reign shining like the day King of heaven come hey Amen, you can be seated Good morning everybody I'm awake now, I don't know about you I'm awake. I kept singing at the wrong place, though. I kept coming in at the wrong place on that song, but that's all right. We'll forgive you. Yeah. At least I was making a joyful noise. I, was, I had a solo, but uh, made a joyful noise. All right. Great to see all of you today. I hope that uh, some of you are far faring well with cedar season. That has uh, seemed to hit uh, like a freight train this week. And we have a number of people who are out with uh, really bad allergies and illness this week, but uh, uh, hope that everybody's doing okay and, and feeling well. We want to welcome those of you who are newcomers. Uh, if you are new here, I'm Pastor James. We want to welcome you officially and uh, ask that uh, if you are a guest here, that you'd fill out a guest card that's located in the uh, Bible rack in front of you. You can pr place that in the offering plate when it comes by a little later on in the service. Or you can uh, uh, use the QR code that's up here on the screen. That'll take you to westoakwoods.com slash connect and you can uh, fill out a form uh, online digitally uh, if you prefer to do that. Um, all right, well, this particular Sunday, uh, w this is the Sunday before Christmas Eve. Do y'all realize that? Yes. My goodness, it seemed, it seems like it was just like we were just in McAllen for a mission trip yes. in the summertime, and uh, here we are at Christmas. But our theme today uh, is trusting God, trusting God's plan, trusting God's sovereignty and who he is, and not trusting in ourselves, so our our theme, our music, our preaching is around that theme today. And uh, as a way to sort of get our minds and our hearts really oriented towards that, I want to read from Psalm 146 this morning. And uh, this is a great psalm of praise. It's a great psalm of faith and trust in God. And it's a great, it's a great psalm to pray. So here's what it says. It says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have being. Put not your trust in princes, in a, in a man in whom there is no help. When his breath departs, he will return to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. But happy is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Thy God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Amen. What a great song. And so as we sing this morning and pray and hear this scripture and focus on the Lord, Let's remember the one in whom we place our trust and our faith is the Lord who created heaven and earth and the Lord who sent a Savior for us. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We praise you today that you indeed are truly the one true God, the one in whom we can place all of our faith, all of our trust, because you are above time. You are everlasting God. You are the one who created the heavens and the earth. You put life into our being. And so, Lord, help us to trust in you today. Help us, Lord, when we're tempted to trust in ourselves or in another person to accomplish some sort of man-made plan. 
that, Lord, we would (laughs) instead submit ourselves and our lives and our plans and all that we are, we would submit in faith to you. Because you, O Lord, are the one who sets the prisoner free. You are the Lord who rescues those who are enslaved. You are the one, Lord, who opens the eyes of spiritually blind to truly see what life is all about. And so, God, we praise you. We trust you. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your one and only Son to pay the ultimate price to set us free. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm convinced every year that we uh, want to sing the same 10 or 15 Christmas songs um, that we grew up singing. Some of you grew up even earlier than I did. Uh, Let's face it, most of you grew up even earlier than I did. And uh, so these songs become classics and ones that we... um, hope to sing and hope to be able to worship with each and every week. The song we're going to sing uh, next now is, has become one of those for me, and it's not, not an old song, but it's, it's a newer, newish song, but it's one that I, I can't help but think of uh, this song when I think of, about the Christmas season. Let's stand as we sing, My Soul Magnifies the Lord. Magnifies the Lord. He 
has done great things for me. Great things for me. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. My soul, magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me. Great things for me. Scripture today. Uh, I'm going to read from both the Old Testament uh, and the New Testament. The Old Testament from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. In fact, we just sang this scripture together. It says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father 
Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And then from 1 John in the New Testament, he said, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Let's pray. Father, we recognize with the fullness of your word, both Old and New Testament, that you are indeed the only one who can save us and we can't save ourselves you are the light of the world and so God we come before you confessing our weakness confessing our sin and Lord asking that you would help us and encourage us by the empowerment of your Holy Spirit to walk in the light. We are, Lord, in a season, the season of Advent and Christmas, a season of light. And I pray that we would walk in the light of Christ, who bore our sin, went to the cross, denied himself, that we may have life. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, come let us adore. 
of peace, mighty God, Emmanuel. We praise each and every one of these aspects of who you are as we try to grasp with our finite words the best way to describe you. And, and every word by itself is, is not enough. And so more names for God are created to try to convey who you are. We are thankful, God, that you are all these things. We are thankful in this season, God, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. We praise your name forever. May our praises be lifted high this morning in your name. Amen. Thank you, John and Ban. Well, we are almost at Christmas, aren't we? We're almost there. Uh, school's out. Almost. One week for y'all. 
Oh, my kids got out this week. <laughs> Some of our educators are going, what? <laughs> One more week. Um, our uh, college football playoff is right around the corner. Uh, we've had uh, Sunday school parties. We've had parties at work. Pajama days at school. Um, we provided a lot of presents for kids at Kasurik this past week, which is really fine. Um, I understand that in the next uh, week or two that uh, many of us will be a part of the 115 million people who are projected to be on a road or in the sky. So Christmas is almost here. Now, I can't help but wonder, however, if we're leaving something or someone out in the midst of all this activity. So this morning, I have it on my heart to bring a message entitled, Cutting Through the Noise of Christmas. So I invite you to read with me in Luke's Gospel, in chapter 4, starting in verse 16, and we're going to read through verse 30. This is one of Jesus' first sermons, and it didn't go so well for him. But in the long run, this sermon is incredible and what it teaches us, especially at this time of the year. Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue, as was his custom on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read, and there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Isn't this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel during the days of Elijah, when the, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and put him out of the city and led him to the brow of a hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong. But passing through the midst of them, he went away. What a story. Let's pray. Lord, during this Christmas season, I pray that you would help us to understand in context what it meant for you so long ago to apply these prophetic words of Isaiah to yourself and how the response of that first century Nazareth crowd may not look that different from a 21st century one, 
But yet we have a choice to respond differently today. Help us to see that choice and to respond accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a noisy time of year. Everything seems to be magnified during the Christmas season. In fact, I want to sort of tell on myself here a little pet peeve of mine. You may resonate with this, but there's a Christmas song that I really don't like. And it's called, All I Want for Christmas is You. Now, no offense to, I think it's Mariah Carey who sang that song. No offense, because she may be watching today. So, <laughs> maybe. You're saying there's a chance. Um, Emma sometimes plays that song on her phone just to rile me up. She and Clara started singing it the other, just the other day. And I said, stop immediately. How dare you, sir? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a loud time of the year. But sometimes... It may be noisy in a quiet way. Some of the loudest noises may be a ping on a phone. A text comes in with bad news. It may be noisy because of a, a, a sounds of equipment in a hospital room. Sometimes the loudest noises are not really noises at all. Sometimes grieving a loss is really loud. Silence can be loud. The sounds of an anxious mind is loud. And this time of the year turns up the volume on that. I don't know about you, but I've experienced that. So here's where we're going this morning, and this is really the crux of the whole sermon. I'm going to give you the good stuff right off the bat here. If you have ears to hear it, there's a voice that can cut through all that noise. That voice will not add to the noise. It'll turn it down. It'll cut through it. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. It's a voice that says today, December 17, in Austin, Texas, Isaiah 61 has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's an incredible voice. It's the voice of one who says, if something is holding you captive today, then I'm here to release you from that. It's a voice that says, if you cannot see in front of you, if you cannot handle life, I'm here to open your eyes. It's the voice of one who says, if you are broken and shattered on the inside, I am here to put you back together. Friends, that voice that cuts through all the noise is none other than the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, the message is simply about how do we tune our ears to that voice when everything else may be very noisy? How do we tune our ears to the voice of the Savior the Son of God. So I want to share with you this morning a simple way to hear Christ. It's a simple way to understand. Sometimes it's very difficult to do, however. But here's how you hear Jesus' voice cut through the noise. Here's how. It's a matter of trusting Him. If you want to hear Jesus' voice, then 
You must trust Jesus. Like I said, simple to say, but hard to do. In fact, Jesus' own hometown folk missed it, didn't they? Even when Jesus was right in front of them, his own kin were in this synagogue. And they wanted to throw him head first off of a cliff. Can you imagine? Why did they want to do that? Because they didn't want to trust him. They just wanted to tell Jesus, to have Jesus tell them things they wanted to hear. And aren't we like that sometimes? We want Jesus to speak to us, but simply to regurgitate back to us what we want to hear. And that's not trust. God's kingdom does not work like that. Jesus doesn't work like that. Jesus did not come to rubber stamp our agenda. Jesus didn't come to bless human intelligence. Oh, you're so smart. Let me give you a little extra guidance. My goodness, Jesus knew full well what the prophets of the Old Testament had to say about humankind. Proverbs 28, 26, for instance. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Jeremiah 17, 5. Cursed is the man who trusts in himself, who draws strength from his own flesh. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. Why would Jesus come to save us if we have nothing to be saved from? Hearing Christ's voice is a matter of trust. It is faith, not faith in ourselves, but faith in Christ alone. You may say, well, James, how do I do that? How do I trust in Christ then and hear his voice? Jesus himself tells us directly here in this passage when he applies Isaiah 61 to himself. In fact, if we take a very close look at what Jesus said, we find out exactly how to place our trust in him and hear his voice. For instance, Jesus tells us, first of all, to trust that he is the Messiah. You say, how do I trust in Christ? How do I hear his voice? I would say, believe, first of all, that he is the Messiah. Now, what does that word Messiah truly mean? Messiah means holy one, anointed one. Jesus said himself that the Spirit of God was upon him, that God had anointed him to preach good news to the poor. That means Jesus saw himself and knew himself to be the Savior, the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. In other words, the Messiah is the promised one who God said in Genesis 3 would crush the head of the serpent. The Messiah is the promised one that God said in Genesis 12 would be the seed of Abraham through whom the whole world would be blessed. The Messiah is the promised one of God who God said would be the ultimate king in the line of David in 2 Samuel 17. And so I've got to ask us today then. Now I know this is a church crowd, right? We're mostly all just church folk here. But it needs to be asked. Do you trust that Jesus is the Messiah? Do you really believe it? Now, I ask you that because I want to tell you, some people can go to church and Sunday school and be church members, but have not trust Jesus. 
They, they may believe, like some in the Nazarene synagogue, man, this, this guy sure does talk good for a carpenter. But forgiveness of sin? Pride can get in the way of our faith, friends. Beware of that. Is pride getting in your way today? There's nothing that drowns out the voice of Jesus, the Messiah, quite like our pride. Pride in ourselves, pride in our abilities, pride in our accomplishments. And all that pride does is give us a sense of complacency and self-sufficiency. This is part of the reason why I think sometimes many people these days are rejecting Jesus and rejecting the church because the message of forgiveness and salvation doesn't mean much when you think you can free yourself from all the ills of the world out there. The message of the cross is boring to those who are, in the words of Reinhold Niebuhr, blinded by the sunshine of their own genius. Oh, they're quiet today. <laughs> but for those of us who recognize that we are sinners in need of grace, for those of us who agree with the Apostle John who said that this world passes away and the lust thereof, for those who know that the things that we try to accumulate to make ourselves secure only make us more insecure. For those of us who know that we cannot save ourselves, the message of Luke 4 and Isaiah 61 and the whole message of Christmas resonates. Jesus is our only hope. Why? Because he is the Messiah. His message is for those of us who are poor. And he's not just talking about those who have trouble making ends meet. Being poor refers to those of us who have been coerced and manipulated by others, and we've even manipulated our own selves, so much so that we need somebody who's greater than us to untwist us. We know the nature, the true nature of the human heart, and when we know that, we know we need a Savior. Trust that He is the Messiah. You are not. If we needed a philosophy to save us, God would have sent a philosopher. If we needed to read just a little book, a manual on how to do life to save us, God would have sent us a little how-to guide. God knows we need a Savior. So He sent a Savior. i got to keep moving. I could keep on that one for a while. Second, you trust Jesus and hear His voice when you trust His proclamation is truly good news. You know, the Savior that we have, the God that we have, is not the man upstairs. He's not a good old boy. He preaches good news. And that good news is this. Help is on the way to those of you who are poor in your spirit. You can't get yourself out of your mess. There's someone who can. That's good. The good news is that someone is coming to release those of you who are prisoners in your own skin. In verse 18, when Jesus proclaims release to the captives, this is amazing. That word captive means prisoner of war. I love this term. In other words, 
when you come to Christ and believe in him, he liberates you from the concentration camp you've made of your life. My goodness. All that war inside you will cease when you come to Jesus. You will have peace and a new heart and a new soul and a new mind. And the good news is also that there is recovery of sight to the blind. Literally, Jesus said he will cause the blind ones, the tuflois is the word he used, to see all all over again. We get our word teflon from the word blind. It means hardened, can't penetrate. In other words, for those of us who think we're made out of Teflon, Jesus can break through that. You think you're a rock? No, you're not. Jesus can get through to you. Let him get through. Let his light break your Teflon coating. Stop trying to be so tough and let Jesus get a hold of your life. You don't have to be John Wayne. You just be you and let Jesus be Jesus. And he can do it if you trust him. That's good news. You do not have to have it all together. You don't have to be stoic all the time. You don't have to be what this world says you have to be. Trust in Jesus. Man, that's good news. And the good news is also that this Messiah sets free those who are oppressed. By the way, Jesus is not using political terms like we use them today. In the Word of God, we are all both oppressed and oppressors at the same time. Did you know that? And that's because we're enslaved to ourselves. We are all broken people. In fact, the word oppressed in the Bible means one who is shattered, decimated, broken, beyond repair. You feel like you're beyond repair today? You're not. Why? Because you have a Savior. Our God and our God alone can put the brokenness of your life together again. He can make you new. Very quickly here, uh, uh, sometimes I talk to folks who think that they are so broken that they're beyond help. And some of you may be in this camp this morning. You may be a Christian, a believer, but perhaps you've done some things or have been involved in some addictive kinds of behavior. I, I don't know what it is, but you feel like you've let God down so badly that you're broken beyond repair. Maybe you're not even saved, you think. Friend, let me tell you something. The Word of God is very clear. Nothing, if you're in Christ, nothing can snatch you out of the hand of the Lord. You are not broken beyond repair. You're not We've all let God down, haven't we? I told my Sunday school class this this morning. Sometimes we do Christianity like we have this big measuring stick, right? And a hundred is really good and perfect and like Jesus, and, and one is very devilish, right? And so some days we think, man, I'm up here at, ni- Pastor James is at 90 and I'm at a two. Or sometimes you may think, I'm at a 90 and Pastor James is at a two, Right? Let's just be honest. (laughs) Christianity is not a scoreboard religion. It's a grace faith. Jesus said, 
I've come for the oppressed, not for those who've had, who have it all together. Stop trying to get it all together. Let Jesus put you together. Amen. And the good news also here is that this Messiah, this Jesus said, I've come to pronounce the favorable year of the Lord. Oh my goodness. The favorable year of the Lord. The year of, in the Old Testament, it's called Jubilee. Here's what that means. This is the official time on God's clock when salvation is ready. Exiles will come home. The debt of sin we owe to God will be forgiven. And our Messiah, the suffering servant, will go to the cross, defeat death, raise from the dead, and bring in the kingdom of God. And as Jesus speaks, <laughs> it's fulfilled. I don't know, even as a preacher, that leaves me speechless, y'all. <laughs> ever seen a preacher without words? Tell them to read Luke 4. Unto us a child has been born. Unto us a son is given. Today in the city of David has been born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you you're not going to find that kid on some golden covered throne somewhere up in Rome. You're going to find him wrapped up in little cloths in a cow feeding manger. He came for you. Thirdly, very, very quickly here. You hear, you trust, and you hear from Jesus when you trust that his message of good news is the actual truth. When you believe that Jesus is not just blowing smoke. Now, what Jesus does here is put the ball then in our court. You can reject this. You can call Jesus a loony. You can look for life lessons and reject the, the Messiah stuff to religious mythology, you can do that. Or you can repent. You can put all of your faith in him to forgive you of sin. You can trust him to save you from death. Because this Savior not only spoke these words, but one Friday, he was arrested. He was accused falsely. And the people with so much pride and legalism in their hearts finally accomplished what this crowd in Nazareth wanted to do at the outset of his ministry. They put him to death. but they never, never did silence him. Because in that death, he shed his blood and atoned for all of our sin. And then early Sunday morning, he defeated death because he defeated sin. And he was able to get up from the grave. And he paved the way for us to walk and newness of life. Do you believe that he is the Messiah and that his good news is true? How will you respond? Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for the good news. My goodness. I pray, Lord, that 
this message of gospel would be transformative in our lives today. Those who are blind today, Teflon, I pray today would be the day of sight. Those who are broken, put back together. And that we would believe this is the time, the favorable year of the Lord. Because of what you've done on the cross and raising from the dead has paid our debts, set us free, and we can be citizens of the kingdom that is coming in right now and will come to full fruition when you come back. May we now respond as your spirit leads us. In Jesus' name. You may have it on your heart to respond in a public way as the Holy Spirit leads you to come for prayer. Say, Pastor James, I want to be a church member. Pastor James, I want to put all of my faith in Jesus Christ and be baptized and signify that faith, that belief. Others, you may have a more personal decision that you need to make and do business with God right where you are or pray with a neighbor or somebody around you. But this is the time we set aside in every service to do business with God and to commit to Him and to make our response to the word that was shared. So as we stand together and as John leads us in song, I invite you to come and make that decision. to come forward, those who are helping to take up the offering. Go ahead and come forward. And I believe Sue Reed is going to lead our deacon offertory prayer today. Let's pray together. Father, as... Father... Father, as we gather here today to praise your name and thank you for coming to this earth to save us from our sins. You have been so kind to do that and loving, and you, we just want to thank you for that. And Father, as we give our tithes and offerings this morning, we just pray that it will be used to the benefit of your, your everybody, your love of everybody, and to be able to spread the gospel in this neighborhood and in our neighborhood and all around the earth. 
and we thank you so much for that. In Jesus' name, amen. few uh, announcements before we are uh, officially formally dismissed. First of all, our uh, Wednesday activities this week uh, are as normal. Uh, we will be uh, for prayer and Bible study on Wednesday night meeting again in the CMB um, because I, I do not know when the next heater is going to arrive and be installed. Um, I, I feel like going to these candles up here and Kind of warm enough. I got kind of warm during the sermon today, so that's all right. Uh, but uh, we'll have that, uh, hopefully have that heating fixed uh, this week. But Wednesday, uh, we'll meet in the CMB for Bible study at 6, and then choir uh, will be rehearsing also at, uh, at 7 o'clock. Ladies, game day is tomorrow at 2. All right, 2 o'clock over in the CMB. And then uh, a reminder about our Christmas Eve schedule. Next Sunday is Christmas Eve. Uh, we will not be having a Bible study or Sunday school, um, but we will be having an extended, I don't know what to call it, the, the, the buffet line, the, the, the feeding station. Um, I don't know. I don't have a word for that, uh, but uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you all do, but I, I just don't know what it is. But uh, this is, we're going to have extra time for visiting and fellowship. And the reason for that is that um, on Christmas every year, uh, family comes into town, and um, sometimes we haven't uh, been able to, to catch up or see other people since last Christmas. So it's, it's a, a good opportunity to visit and, and catch up with folks who uh, may be in town and don't get to town that, that often. So uh, we're going to start that at, at 10 o'clock, and we'll have our worship service as usual at, uh, at 1045. And then I do also want to remember, remind you about our end of the year giving as we try to finish our year very strong with tithes and offerings, as well as our uh, Lottie Moon offering for international missions uh, that we uh, also close out the year with as well. All right. Well, I believe, I believe that's it. So let's stand together and let's pray. Uh, as we're dismissed today. Thank you for worshiping with us both on site and online. Let's pray together. Lord, we're grateful for your grace, for being our Savior, for coming to us, God incarnate, God in the flesh, perfectly divine, perfectly man, to take all of our sin upon you, to atone for our sin, and to give us the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.